standard costing. The second variance we're going to look at is it has to do with direct labor. And direct labor, remember, we're going to look at what our actual costs are, what they actually cost us. In other words, how many hours did the guys actually work and what was the, the labor rate that we actually paid them. So that would give me actual. And we're going to compare that with the flexible budget. And you remember the flexible budget is the actual output times the standard quantity, in other words, the standard hours that you expect it to take, times the standard rate. In other words, what did you project at the beginning of the year that you were going to pay labor? And we're going to use exercise 8 as an example. And you'll see in exercise 8 that we're making 8 cylinder engine blocks. And the problem tells us that um, we have a standard direct labor hours per engine block is 1.8 hours. So that's the standard we set at the beginning of the year. So that standard would show up in the flexible budget as the standard quantity. It also says that we signed a union contract at the beginning of the year to pay the guys $14 an hour. So that's the standard rate. So standard quantity, standard rate. In the problem it says we actually produced during the month 16,500 engine blocks. So to do our flexible budget, actual output 16,500 engine blocks times 1.8 hours per engine block times $14 an hour. So our flexible budget comes out to be $415,800. Well, we'll compare that with what we actually spent. And the problem, last piece of information that they give me is that we actually worked 29,900 hours and that cost us 433,550. Now, you can figure the actual rate if you want, but I didn't do it. But you can't, so I put a question mark there instead. So first off, let's see how much actual varied from the flexible budget. Well, actual is a lot more than the flexible budget. Well, how much more is it? Uh, let's see. It looks like it's $17,750. And since you actually spent more than your budget, that's the big unfavorable. It's unfavorable because you exceeded your expectations. You over, you overspent. Well, there's lots of reasons why you could have overspent. It could be that you spent more time to make the products. It could be that you spent more per hour on these products. So the next thing we're going to do is take that direct labor variance and split it into the rate or spending variance and the quantity or efficiency variance. So let's look at rate first. Now we're going to compare what we actually spent with something called actual at standard. And the actual at standard is the actual quantity, well how many hours? 29,900 at the standard rate. Well what's the standard rate? $14. So 29,900 times $14 is $418,600. So if I compare what I actually spent with this actual quantity at standard, I have isolated the part that has to do with how much I paid the guys an hour. And notice it's $14,950 and because I actually spent more than the actual at standard, it's unfavorable because I overspent. The other variance you can look at has to do with the hours that you worked. Now notice I actually worked 29,900 hours. If I compare that with the hours I should have worked, which is the actual output 16,500 times 1.8, 16,000 times 1.8, you would get a number here that would be less than the 29,900 hours. How do I know that? Well, just look at these numbers. This is greater than this by $2,800. So what it's telling me is did you spend more hours doing the work than you had anticipated, meaning it's unfavorable. 
So notice that this unfavorable variance is made up of both an unfavorable rate or spending variance, meaning you paid the guys more per hour, and an unfavorable quantity or efficiency variance, which means they worked more hours than you had anticipated. Now, we would want to get to the bottom of this, wouldn't we? So this is the mechanics, but the big question that still remains is why did it happen?